Hi everyone, it's Gemma aka Jam Jar Sews from Instagram and I'm here for another tutorial with the lovely people at Bombay Stores Fabrics. So today we're going to learn how to make a nice short sleeve summer shirt using the McCall's M80067 pattern and this actually came out with the June edition of the Love Sewing Mag so hopefully you've managed to get your hands on that. And also very excitingly in the sewing mag was uh, a page from Bombay Stores Fabrics featuring the jumpsuit that I also made on this channel. So if you're interested in making one of these for yourself, then um, please check out that other tutorial. But today we're going to focus on the short sleeve shirt. So as you can see, there's a few different options here. We've got sort of a cropped short sleeve version, full length short sleeve version and a long sleeve version with sort of cuff sleeves. As the weather is currently unbelievably hot, I'm going to be making the cropped short sleeve version today. I was really lucky this time round to be able to actually go and pick out my fabric in person. So I got to visit the Bombay Stores Fabric store in Bradford and meet the team. And I fully recommend it if you're in the area or plan a trip there because the range of fabrics they had were amazing. The team were really helpful and it had loads of other interesting stuff in the shop as well. Lots of amazing notions. Um, haberdashery and, and you know interesting decorations and things so definitely recommend checking that out and this fabric by Little Johnny Fabrics really caught my eye so as you can probably tell from the top I'm wearing at the moment I quite like fabric with faces on it. and then you also need interfacing which you can also get from Bombay Stores Fabrics and you just need this to do the interfacing around the collar and then you need three buttons and again you can get these from Bombay Stores Fabrics and they recommend 15 millimeter or 5 eighths of an inch. This pattern's fairly simple because it's just a cropped shirt so in terms of pattern pieces I've already cut mine out. Um, you have a back piece, a front piece with this nice sort of like um, sloped neckline here and this version actually doesn't have a collar so it's just going to be that sloped neckline. Then you have um, your back facing and your front facing and you cut these out in normal fabric in your fabric and then also in interfacing. And then it's just got this short sleeve. Now, as I was working through the pattern, I did cut everywhere. It said cut for view A because I want the crop version. But obviously you can lengthen and shorten as, as you need. So the first step after we set up cut out our pattern pieces before we dive into the pattern is to transfer all of the pattern markings. So that's your, your notches, which are these small triangles here, and then these dots, which you can do. I tend to usually do them using tailor's tacks. And if you check out my video on making a shift dress on this channel, I talk in detail about how you transfer all those markings across um, using different methods. My first step, if I was putting pockets on the shirt, would be to sew the pockets on. I'm actually, despite the fact that normally I take any opportunity to add pockets, I'm actually not adding pockets this time because I only tend to add them where I think they'll be useful. And I think pockets here don't tend to be that useful to me. So in this case, I'm going to skip those first steps of adding the pockets, which means my first stage is to pin together my two front pieces to my one back piece, because we cut the back piece on the fold, so there's just one, and you pin it right sides together at the shoulders and at the side seams. But at the side seams, you're just going to stitch down to where you've marked the big circle. Our next step is to do the facing and each of the facing pieces needs to be interfaced. So you have this shorter bit which goes at the back and then you've got these long bits that go down the front of the shirt. And I've used like a fairly lightweight interfacing because this fabric has quite good structure on its own. I pinned my facing to my shirt so it's pinned around the back there and then all the way down the front. There is sort of a gap between the facing and the bottom of the shirt which I think based on the pattern instructions is supposed to be there and they seem to sort of cut this rectangle out where the gap is. I haven't seen that before in a pattern I'm, and the instructions don't seem to describe it so I think I'm going to leave mine for now and then see how I feel about it when I come to hemming it. So all I'm going to do for now is I'm going to do use a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch my facing um, to my shirt piece 
And then the next step is to understitch it. Done to prepare it for understitching is I've pressed my seam allowance, my trimmed seam allowance there, where I've connected the facing and the main shirt. I press that towards the facing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I pin that all down um, because I pressed it and pinned it to help it stay in place. And then I'm going to do a very narrow line of stitching um, just on the side where I press the seam allowance towards it. The next step is then to sew in the sleeve. Starts off with this sort of wide um, bell shape thing, or it's almost like a statistical distribution graph. Um, and you've got you've stitched in using your tailor's tack or marked however you like these three big circles. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to sew some long stitches between those three dots and that's going to help us with fitting the sleeve because it will allow us to gather in here at my machine and I've changed my stitch length already to four I would usually use a two and a half as my regular stitch length um, and the way I do this is I just line up sort of the edge of my presser foot or close with the bottom dot and then I just go around the curve, sewing those long stitches And because we're going to be gathering, it's important to leave a nice long thread. And then we do three lines of that. Again, I just line it up with my presser foot. So the next step, once we've sewn in those three lines of stitching, is to put right sides together, these two shorter sides like this. I like this. to do it. I've got my shirt here. I've got my open armhole here with the raw edges and I've got my sleeve here. And what I like to do is turn the shirt piece inside out so we can see the right sides on the inside. Then with my sleeve, I pop that in so it's right sides together. And I like to start with this side seam And then here. where I haven't got any gathering stitches, I'm just going to pin that on either side. And once I've got those parts in, I will then start to gather up the sleeve at the top. And I'll just sort of pull it on either side, first of all, and then I will adjust the fit as needed. And whilst I'm doing this, I'll also align the top circle from the sleeve with the shoulder seam. So to stitch this in, I'll use a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, but I always, and I think patterns when we recommend this, baste in my sleeves first, because I find this quite a tricky part to do. So I'll baste in with long stitches. Again, I'll use a four stitch length, and I normally use 2.5. Then I'll check the fit of that, and then I will go ahead and sew it with a normal stitch line. Okay, so I've got both of my sleeves set in now. Um, not too painful, thankfully, and there's no puckers or anything, so that's good. Um, the next step for me is then to hem the sleeves. Now, in the pattern, it says to hem them before you put them in. I never do it that way because I want to try them on first and make sure they're even. So I do it in that order, but it's completely up to you. And then after we've put the sleeves in, the next step before we put the buttons on is to hem the shirt. Preparation to do the bottom hem, I've used zigzag stitching to finish the facing piece and also the bottom edge. And it says to hem it by five eighths of an inch. Where they said to cut out the little square by the facing, I've left that in. And I'm just going to fold that over like that. And then when we get to this pattern's really nice. It's got these sort of split sides. So I'm going to pin all the way down here and then I will fold that in like that. On the hem where you get to the splits. What I've done is, um, as the pattern instructs, I've sewn the bottom hem first. And then when I've got to the split, I've gone up one side from the bottom. I put my needle in, turn the fabric then did a line across here of a couple of stitches, then put my needle back in and stitch down here. Now we've hemmed it, our final step is to do the buttons and the buttonholes. And in the pattern, it just sort of says, do your buttons and buttonholes, which I find a bit ambiguous. So I'm gonna try and talk you through it. So for the buttonholes, which I'm gonna do first, I think that's the right way around to do it. You can see the width, like the length of the buttonholes and where they should be on your pattern piece. So you can see we've got one, two, three for view A, which is the view that we're making. 
and this line tells you where your buttonhole will start and end and that's where that your machine if you're doing it on your machine is going to do it so i'm going to transfer these markings with taylor's chalk to the right hand side of my shirt because that's where the buttonholes are going to okay, go okay so now we're going to sew our buttonholes i've already sewn one on as a test um, each machine has instructions in its user manual for how to do buttonholes and I'm not the best at buttonholes I will say so I recommend checking out your machine manual but I'll give you just a bit of a chat through how I do mine if that would help. So this is the buttonhole foot that we install for doing our one step buttonholes and um, you can get these for pretty much any machine they just clip in really easily here like a normal presser foot. Um, it's got this section at the back where you should be able to put in your buttons and get a perfect size buttonhole. That never quite seems to work for me. The buttonholes always end up too small. So what I do is I put in my button and then I add a bit of extra length. Then you pull down this little lever, which again most machines should have if it allows you to do buttonholes. And that basically makes sure that when it's moving back and forth, that length corresponds to the length that you've defined here. So that's that step. Uh, then on your presser foot, you have this red line here, and that's going to line up with where you've drawn your bottom line of your buttonhole. You just use a normal needle, and also your machine should have a specific setting for buttonholes. So I've set that. I know that my needle will go to the right when it's doing its buttonhole. So for the second buttonhole, I'm going to get this sort of buttonhole lever in the middle and then I'm going to do a bit of lining up to get this red line to line up with the bottom end of the uh, buttonhole marking and then I want my needle to go where I've drawn the centre line. Then all you do is go along with your needle you have your finished buttonhole our three buttonholes for our buttons. As I said, not the best at buttonholes, that is a definite learning curve for me, but they're okay. They seem to be vaguely in the right place and in a straight line, so I'm taking that as a win. So to open them up when we get down to it, all you do is grab your seam ripper, and I tend to start in the middle, and you just go in and you go it towards one end, Cut, be careful not to cut through the threads on the other end and then towards the other end. So now that I've got the buttonholes done, I've tried on my shirt and I've positioned where I think the buttons need to go using pins. So I kind of overlapped them in the front and made sure that the bottom of it, of the front and the back lined up. I'm going to tack my buttons on and then I'm going to see how it fits. And again, this is a chance for you to sort of look at how the how much you want the front and back to overlap how low you might want your neckline to be so it's a good chance to sort of play with the fit a little bit then once i'm happy with that i'll sew them on properly again by hand you can use your machine if you want to but i prefer to do it by hand and then that's our lovely uh shirt finished so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you found it helpful and I would encourage you all to go away and make your own summer shirts with some lovely fabric from Bombay Stores Fabrics. And if you do follow this tutorial, please do share your pictures with us um, on Instagram at Bombay Stores Fabrics and at Instagram at Jam Jar Sews. I would love to see all of your creations. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.